Hello, friend! My name is Asindra, and today I'm going to continue playing for you Magical Diary Horse Hall with Friend! Hi! Friend who got detention. Uh, <laughs> I'm so mad I got detention. Uh, it's gonna be great. Right, here's me trying to do a good thing. Oh, nope, look, detention. Alright. On Saturday morning, I get up terribly early and deliver the mail and allowances, and then I have to serve my detention. Miss Quill, Mr. Danson, must I forever be bundled with this nonsense? Since you are both being punished for the same offense, you will receive the same punishment. He points to the tables, where there are two very large glass jars filled with pebbles sitting there. You will each take one jar. You will take out each pebble individually by hand. You will place each pebble on the table, forming two separate stacks. After you have removed each pebble, you will write down the total number of pebbles that were in the jar. You will then return all of the pebbles to your jar by hand. I have ways of detecting whether or not each pebble has been touched. Do not attempt to shirk. Do you understand? Sure. And if your count is off, or you attempt to pocket any of the pebbles, I will lock you in this room with no food or water until Monday. Get on with it. Pretty sure that's like against Child the rules. Abuse. Yeah, a little bit. Like neglect Just, uh, or something. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> he stalks out of the room, closing the door behind him. What's the point of this? Boredom. That's all. Great. Sorry I got you into this. You didn't, it was my decision. I mean, it wouldn't have been right to let you them think you were trying to hurt me when you weren't. Yeah, well, I knew I was going to get busted for it and I didn't warn you. If he knew he'd get into trouble, why did he do it? Well, I better get to work. At the end of the day, I have counted and recounted 432 pebbles. And my neck hurts. You got the naughty achievement. <laughs> uh, uh, also, you got stress. Oh, I God. think you got like 10 stress. Ugh, that's a lot. Mm. But at least I get to leave. <laughs> You're still laughing about that, aren't you? Yeah. It's hilarious <laughs> oh, <dare>. to me. How <laughs> oh, dare. Friend so. being a good person got her detention. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, let's move on to next week. Um, Amethyst? Yes? Do you like theater? Plays? I don't know. Why? Well, the drama club is doing Medea this week, and I kind of want to see it, but I don't want to go by myself. What's Medea? It's a classic Greek... Greek... Greek <laughs> tragedy. It's about a witch whose lover betrays her and the terrible things she does for revenge. That doesn't sound very nice. That's why it's a tragedy. They're doing it Friday and Saturday night, and I was thinking I'd rather go Friday. Is it free? No, it's five dollars for students. So, do you want to come? Ooh, we are saving up for that one, though, aren't we? Yeah. You can go or you. not go, it doesn't matter. Let's go. It'll be fun, probably. You get Ellen points. Yeah. Sure, alright. Thanks. Better figure out what else I'm doing this week. Alright, I want to sleep, for starters. Uh, let's do blue and red and green and white. Not into that black magic. <laughs> we will do some black magic next week. It's fine. Oh, you got twenty-five stress reduce. Okay. Nice. I slept so much. <laughs> <laughs> I am sleepy. Sleepy friend. Yay, magic! You learned <gasps> how to make things dark. Yay! You cast cape over your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me while I just like. Put my. This is clearly, clearly. I must have learnt this yesterday because else, how else would I be able to sleep if I didn't have like darkness around me? Yeah, 
You yeah. also learned far speak, which is being able to yell. Uh, <laughs> two spells is cool. That's a lot, actually. Yeah. Oh, oh obnoxious management. music. I'm getting ready for dinner when someone knocks on the door. Hey. Oh, hi, guys. What's up? Want to earn some easy merits? Doing what? Butching and baking and candlestick making. Butching. That's not the right word. It could be. She's a horse. You ever been kicked by one? What did you want me to do again? He already said. Are you in or not? What are we doing? Making candles. Oh, okay. That's good. Thing. He did say candle making. Yes. You would said yes? Yeah. Okay. Fine, lead on. The boys lead me to a classroom with a stove set up at the back, normally used for potions making. There are several pots and a collection of metal cylinders on the floor nearby. They don't have, like they don't have lids and they're not the right size for any pipes I know of. What are they? There you are. Now, if you'll just hold still for a moment. A wave of green magic rolls over me. That should improve your resistance to heat and stop you from burning yourself too easily. Of course, you'll still need to be careful. Especially you, Mr. Pfeiffer. Yes, ma'am. You have an instruction sheet here with all the steps, including the proportions for the dyes and fragrance oils. Do you have any questions? We're cool. All right, I'm going out for a while, but I'll be back shortly to keep an eye on things. Don't worry, I won't interfere. I might even bring my knitting. She walks out, leaving me with two boys who obviously haven't told me everything. What are we doing here? Making candles. It's for the fundraiser thing. Oh, right. Are any of these mine? Yours. Because I'm treasure, I get I got to pick the design for the freshman candles. Oh, I don't know then. Well, what we've got here is all the same type, so it's only one class. Oh. So she is not so mad at you about last week then? Who, Potsdam? Nah, she was never really mad. She loves me. She loves you so much, why doesn't she marry you? What? She's an old lady, you goon. Doesn't stop grabbing her. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently. Well, that's that's there's very specific circumstances that involve your life on the line <laughs> that involve uh, your that in, include your marriage. So like it's not for lack of trying not to be anywhere near the student body. <laughs> <laughs> All right then. She's not that old. A little bit too old for you, I'm sure. And we shouldn't talk like this in case she comes back. Right. Candles. So, how does it work? Set up the wick, melt the wax, pour it in, then cool it down. Easy. You can cast a seal spell, right? No. Alright, you run the wax and Luke can do the wicks. Sure. Okay, the wax is set up in double boiler. Make sure there's always water in there and keep an eye on the temperature. If the wax gets too hot, it will explode. Explode? That's why Potsdam heat proofed us. Just keep an eye on it. As long as you're watching, we'll have time to catch it if it starts going wrong. When the wax chunks are melted down, mix in the oil and the color, then stir it with a wooden spoon. Have you done this before? No, I read the directions. It's not that hard. Once a pot is ready, you can pour it into the molds. And what are you going to do while we're working? I get the hard part. You'll see. Working together, Luke and I assemble and fill candle molds. Alright, stand back. Here I go. I can feel the magic in the air, but I'm not sure what he's doing. What is that? Shh, hang on. He's still casting it. Okay, this is a tougher spell than usual. A minute later, he relaxes. There you go. You can cut off the ends now. I look inside the mold. Not only has the wax cooled, but it's shrunk away from the size of the mold completely evenly. 
You can't cool it all at once or it'll collapse. And if you leave it to cool on its own, it sinks full of holes, so it's tricky. Couldn't you just shape the wax around the wick in the first place without melting it? It wouldn't work right afterwards. It wouldn't blend right. And so we produce a nice set of candles. None of the steps are terribly difficult, but done over and over it is tiring. Wonderful work, ducklings! Ten merits for each of you. Yay, merits. Yay. A job well done. I like to think this makes up for detention. Yeah. <laughs> Green magic. Yay. Oh, I didn't learn the spell. Oh. Nope. White magic. Yay. Still didn't learn the spell. Mm. Nope. Ellen and I meet outside the gym. There are a lot of people here. Not just students, but ordinary people and families who must have driven up to see me play. After we buy our tickets, we can go inside. Folding chairs have been set up in rows across the gym floor, facing the stage. Behind the stage, a giant backdrop painting hangs on the wall, displaying marble pillars and steps to suggest a fantasy of ancient Greece. At least it looks like a painting. It's probably an illusion. That's got to be a lot easier than having to paint something so huge. We find a place to sit without anyone too tall in front of us. After a while, the show begins. It was every bit as tragic as Ellen suggested, and bloody too. Nice special effects, though. Hell hath no fury like a woman scorned. Is that Shakespeare? No, it was someone else. Cosgrove, I think, from The Morning Bride. So, what's that one about? Another story of murder and revenge? Sort of. It's complicated. Let me see if I can remember. The rebel leader kidnaps the princess, but then they fall in love and get secretly married. But then there's a shipwreck, and she's washed up alone and rescued by her father, the king. So the king wants to marry her off to his ally, and she doesn't dare tell him she's already married to his enemy, and she thinks the rebel fellow is dead anyway. Only he's not, because he was washed up somewhere else and rescued by a queen, who falls in love with him. And the king falls in love with the queen, but they're enemies. So everyone loves every someone who loves someone else, and they all try to murder the people that they think have betrayed them, and then they feel guilty and try to change their minds. Only it's too late because the plots are already in motion, so they all end up killed by their own assassins. So the moral is, I guess, that revenge is dangerous. Or else, don't change your mind. <laughs> Even if a man treated me like Jason, I would never do what Medea did. Well, of course you wouldn't do that. But if someone I love betrayed me? Oh. What sort of character is this character? What sort of character are you, friend? I don't know. I, I personally, I'd just kind of move on. Hmm. So you'd want to forget? Yeah, I guess. Yeah. And... <sighs> Being betrayed is terrible, but trying to get revenge would only make things worse. It wouldn't fix anything that's already happened, you'd just make more people unhappy. The only way to make things better is to forget you ever loved them and move on. Then eventually it wouldn't hurt anymore. Eventually. Anyway, thanks for coming with me. No problem. On Saturday morning, I get up early and go to the staff room to collect the mail. Amethyst, there you are. Here, let me give you a hand with this. We need to get moving. Where are we going? To the mall for the fundraiser. You did say you'd cover my shift, remember? Right. Uh, which shift is that? Well, because we're only lowly freshmen, we're supposed to do the last shifts, and all the officers have to help set up first thing in the morning, so we're going to be there all day. Um... I mean, you are. I'm really sorry about this. It's just that I... I promised someone, and I can't... I'll make it up to you somehow. Pro tip, she never does. Aww. At least I don't yeah, think she does. <laughs> yeah, maybe if I, like, study or something, she'll, like, help me or something, I don't know. That would be nice, yeah. That would be. That's alright. Anyway, let's get the mail out. 
Minnie and I delivered the mail, including our own allowances, and then took a van to the mall with Professor Grabner, the other student officers, and the goods for our booth. The booth looked very festive with all the candles. It should do well. Anyway, I'm free for most of the day. I can do whatever I want as long as I don't leave. What should I do? I want to go and check out the magic store because I can't remember what it was we were going to get. I think it was the wand. The wiggle wand. It's $50. Yeah. Oh, okay. Never mind. We didn't need to go there. Whatever. We are going anyway. <laughs> Another one. Wiggle wand. Wiggle wiggle wand. I kind of want a tiara. Yeah? You want to get a tiara? I'm tempted. <laughs> I mean, it, does it does it actually does it actually show up on your character? Yeah. Oh my god, do it. It's That's... cute plus ten. That's all uh, it gives you. I don't care. I have a crown. I have a tiara. So you want it? Yeah. Yeah. You purchased a tiara. Yay. Okay. Alright, I'm done. As the day passes, I grow more and more bored with them all. It's a fun place to visit, but, well, nobody lives here. But wandering around all day with nowhere to go and nothing much to do gets old. It's getting dark and cold in here. On the bright side, that does make a display of candles look that much more inviting. At last, it's time for my turn at the booth. To my surprise, Professor Grabiner is standing behind the booth when I arrive. Sir? Do not worry, Miss Quill. I am only here to supervise. I am not a salesman. No, oh, I can't imagine he'd be a very good one. Take your place. I will be sitting over there if you have need of me. And only if you have need. I do not appreciate being interrupted when I am reading. Yes, sir. I step behind the booth and look over the current supplies. Once I've taken count of what's available, I get to work smiling at passers-by, hoping to encourage them to check out my wares. An older student pauses by the booth. Uh, what was her voice? Oh, the candles. Do you want to buy one? I know we're supposed to be taking money from non magical people, but I don't think it's against the rules to sell to witches. She picks up one of my pink peppermint tea lights and sniffs at it. Pink and peppermint? Do you really think that goes together? Apparently someone does. They've been selling. Hmm. I suppose a small child might find them cute. You got cute points. Okay, I do. Well, perhaps you should leave them for the children then? <laughs> she rolls her eyes at me but leaves. More people come by to check out the candles. And a few buy some. More after I learn to start telling everyone it's a fundraiser for a school. What well, it is. And time passes, and passes, and passes. I don't have a watch, and I'm not sure how long these shifts are supposed to be anyway. What do we, when do we get to go home? I could ask the professor, but he said not to bother him, so... At last, with great clattering of metal, the shops of them all begin to close. Professor Grabiner blinks and looks up from his book. Miss Quill, what time is it? I... I don't know, sir. I start to wobble, and he leaps from his seat to catch me. Idiot girl, have you not sat down for all this time? No, sir. He sighs. <sighs> well, I can't take you back like this. Someone would assume I'd work you to the bone on purpose. Come along, then. After a quick detour to lock up the remaining supplies and money, he leads me to the glen. And we will find out what he does to you in the glen next time. <laughs> uh. <laughs> My that phrasing is so bad. That's <laughs> no, so ominous. It's fine. You're fine. Are you sure we're not accidentally going down that route? <laughs> no, you're fine. It's fine. Okay. <laughs> we're, if we, I don't think we'll accidentally get married to him next time. <laughs> oh, <laughs> if yeah. that helps. Oh. So That's fine. <laughs> anyway... So thank you for watching. Friend, how did you enjoy your detention? Uh, but at least you got merits after that for me. Did friends get merits Donald. after that? Like do you get that option even if you don't help out what's his name? Donald. I think you um only get it if you help Donald or if you do detention with Donald once. 
Oh, I'm okay with that. I don't remember. <laughs> but, yeah. but it sounds like something this game would do. <laughs> it does, yeah. So, I love you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.